Hello friends, today we have received a faulty VFD for repairing. It is a Mitsubishi Make VFD with model number FRD720S 0.75 kW. Its input rating is 11.8 amperes 240V AC and the output is 4.2 amperes 240V. There are some issues with it which we will try to repair today. So let's connect the input power to it and see what's the problem with it. For safety purpose, we will use a syringe lamp. Here, if we look closely, we can see L1 and L2 printed, which are the input terminals, and UV and W, which are the output terminals. Let's connect the 220 volt power supply to L1 and L2 and then see what's problem it is showing. We have already connected the input supply to it but it is still did not turn on there is no any indication visual here let's check the input voltage is using a multimeter uh, it is showing around 230 volt but still it is not turning on so let's open it up and then proceed with troubleshooting step by step here we can see that there is another pcb also connected to separate both we need to desolder all these points We have already separated all the PCBs. Now we will check each one of them step by step. First, let's examine this one. It is connected with a heatsink, which indicates the presence of rectifier and IGBT here. To check the rectifier in this one, let's apply power to its input and then we will measure the DC voltage across the positive and negative terminal. There is a 234V AC available at the input terminal. Now let's measure the DC voltage across the P and N terminal of the rectifier. We need to be careful because we are checking DC voltage which can be dangerous. Here we are seeing a DC voltage of approximately 226 volt. We look at this circuit board. It is appears to be an IGVT gate driver circuit. However, our issue that the inverter is not turning on. So we can see a transformer here indicating that uh, this is the SMPS section. Now let's focus on this section and uh, for the switching control of this transformer, we can see a MOSFET. Here we can see P1 and N printed which indicate the point where we will receive the DC current after the rectifier. Here we can see the three terminal of this MOSFET. G for gate, D for drain and S for source. Now let's check the components related to this terminal. Now we have set our multimeter to continuity mode and we will attempt to trace these circuits. Uh, here upon closure inspection we can see the primary binding of the transformer and this appears to be secondary binding. It seems that one end of the primary binding is connected to the drain of the MOSFET and the other end of the primary binding will be connected to the positive side let's confirm it once with the multimeter from here to here we see a resistance of 59 ohms on this side we can see a 60 ohms register it seems that one end of the register is connected to the positive side and the other end is connected to the primary side of the transformer so this circuit appears to be okay so the positive is reaching through this register here and the negative side is connected to the drain of the MOSFET which will receive the negative when it's switching. Let's uh, trace the source of the MOSFET. It is connected from here to here and then from here to here. Here it is connected with uh, this diode. Let's check this diode also once. It seems that uh, diode also is good. When I traced this circuit carefully, it appeared that the source of the negative is coming through this register and reaching here via this diode. Now let's measure the resistance from here to here. We can see that the resistance is showing 2.3 mega ohms, which indicates that something is abnormal here in this circuit. Now let's check the value of each register one by one. Before checking, let's physically inspect these registers. The others appears to be fine but uh, this particular register seems to be damaged or faulty in some way. 
Now let's start by checking this particular register. Its value is showing 0.8 mega ohms. However, when we check the same printed rating register here, it reads uh, 55 kilo ohms, and again it reads 55 kilo ohms. But this particular register is showing 0.8 mega ohms. This indicating that it is uh, damaged. So we should replace it first. After replacing the register, let's recheck the resistance of this circuit. Now it is showing around 263 kilo ohms, indicating that the circuit is now normal. It can be challenging to repeatedly solder and desolder a small VFDs like this. So we would be wise to replace all these capacitor as well. Now we have replaced all these capacitor and register. Let's connect it with it together. But by the way, if we connect it directly and then it has any problem, then again we need to desolder it. To avoid that, let's connect it using wire from here to here and then we will apply power and see. We have connected both PCB using wires and now let's apply power to it. So now we can see it is turned on successfully. So now let's pack it properly and then we can perform a final checking after that. We have packed it properly and now it look ready. There are no any fault. So let's try giving it a run command and see what's happen. After giving the run command, we can see the run signal LED has a start blink. And still now there is no any potentiometer connected. That's why it is showing frequency zero. Now let's connect a potentiometer here and see what happen. We have now connected the potentiometer. Let's give the run command once again and here we can observe that as we vary the potentiometer, the frequency is also varying accordingly. Now let's measure the AC voltage at uh, its output terminal. Here we can see that the VFD output voltage is showing 203 volt AC and the frequency is 32 Hz. As we increase the frequency, we can observe that the voltage at the output terminal is also increasing. So it means we have successfully repaired this VFD. I hope you found this video informative for you. So please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel for more video related to electronics. And thank you for watching.